We're going to do a little interview style uh, question and answer here, him and I. Um, so, Paul, can you tell us, how did you get started in the monster truck industry? Well, um, well, first off, I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be here and, um, you know, it's definitely an honor to be a part of the Master Cam family. I couldn't have gotten to where I'm at in the manufacturing side without their support for the last several years because my first experience with CAD CAM was a disaster and, uh, and these guys stepped in, got me trained and moved me to where I'm at today and, I am, and I'm proud of where we're at in our manufacturing side. But back to where you were at, um, how did I get started Monster Trucks? Um, I've been doing this for 31 years. When I first got into Monster Trucks, I built the truck, first truck to promote our full wheel drive shop there in Houston, Texas. And, uh, you know, truck and tractor pulls was the big thing going on back then. So we were kind of a side act at truck and tractor pulls. Well, I did that for about three months. Thought, man, this is great. Sold the full wheel drive shop. 31 years later, I'm still racing monster trucks. And um, for quite a few years, I campaigned my own trucks. I had a truck, I started out with a truck called King Crunch. And um, unique deal about our sport, all the trucks have names. The trucks have their own identities. And, uh, so I had a truck called Just Showing Off, and I followed that one up uh, with Purina Mainstay, corporate sponsorship from Purina Dog Food Corporation. And I enjoyed that success for about 10 years. And then uh, we see the Grave Digger shirt on, and I think probably everybody knows Dennis Anderson with Grave Digger. Tell us about Grave Digger. How did you get started with them? Well, the Grave Digger truck is really starting to gain a lot of popularity. You know, in the in the ten years while I was campaigning my own trucks, the the fans were really getting behind the Grave Digger truck, and you know, it had become very popular. Well, due to popular demand, there was another promoter that was putting on some events, and he got with me and he said, "Yeah, I really wanted to have a Grave Digger truck at my shows, and you know, but they're all booked up." And I said, "Well, let me talk to Dennis Anderson and, and see if I can put a deal together." So. I spoke with Dennis Anderson, with the, the owner of the Grave Digger team at the time, and he kind of stepped out on a limb with me. He said, well, let's put a Grave Digger body on your truck and we'll run it for 10 shows and see how that works out. 20 years later, uh, I'm still driving Grave Digger. And now, you know, we see these Grave Diggers everywhere. How many Grave Digger trucks or teams are there out there? Well, we're currently campaigning seven race teams. Uh, you know, it's Dennis Anderson, myself, and five other drivers, and you know we kind of we go all over the country doing shows now. And we see shows here, and I know you're you're on the west side of the country. How many shows are there a year with the, the held entertainment with Monster Truck? Well, with the Monster Jam series, we do about 150 events a year all over the United States. Actually, we're tra traveling abroad. I think uh, they've got shows going on in Arnhem, Holland. They're going to Australia this year. And, and some other countries, but about 150 events a year in the United States. So I know my kids, when they watch, they want to see the trucks upside down, on their side, crashing up. How, how do you see that? You know, a lot of destruction in monster truck racing. Seems yeah. like that's, uh, if you supply parts to them, that's good for business. There's definitely a lot of destruction. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a lot of destruction. And, and like you say, that is good for business. You know, I love, I love watching the guys go out there and really you know, push the trucks to the limit and, you know, maybe tear them up because Monday morning they'll be ordering more parts. And when did you join the uh, Master Cam family? Well, I got started back, I guess it would be eight years ago, version 10. I'd actually had a little experience before that. Um, the shop up the road was using Master Cam version 9, I think, at the time. And one of the guys that worked there came over to my shop in the evenings and he would help, you know, get my machines set up and running, you know, programmed the parts for me. I had no clue about CNC's. I, I can tell you how I got into CNC's is I was always held hostage by other shops um, needing me to, you know, I need to get parts made. My business had grown to a point where I could no longer you know, keep up with manual machines so I was outsourcing my CNC work and I was always falling, you know, victim to you know, time scheduling and plus I would only want 20 pieces of this, 20 of that and my lead times were real long, the cost was prohibitive. So I went out on a CNC lathe, got into the shop, set it up, turned it on, I say I turned it on, I turned on the control, and that's when I figured out I knew absolutely nothing about CNCs. And 
what had I gotten myself into? I jumped out of the frying pan into the fire on this deal. I, I had no clue what to do. So that's when I knew I needed to find a CAD CAM system. And you know, I went to the PRI show and well, well, first off, I bought a different system, and it was to me it was uh, it was a waste of money. I, I got no customer support from the vendor. The drawing package in it was just short of an etch a sketch, and. I went to the PRI show looking for one thing, master cam and, and a contact there to see if we could get on the right track. And I met Jane. So I'd say I joined the family about two weeks after that. You guys uh, <laughs> took me in, got me set up with training, and, and I started with version 10. And now in your shop, what, what CNC machines do you have in there? Well, we're currently running five CNC machines and a flow water jet. I have two, two axis lays. Uh, two four-axis mills, and my newest machine that I've added is a Haas DS30Y subspindle y-axis machine. So, and what what type of parts are you making on the, the Haas machine? On the Haas, we're currently actually um, we're making a lot of spindles right now. Uh, the, which we have one right. This here. is a spindle. He says it's 28 pounds, but I don't know if it's 28 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's about 28 pounds now, but uh, when that starts, it starts out as a 160 pound um, billet slug, and we're running that on the Haas. Uh, we're doing all the turning operations, you know, off one, off two, uh, the bolt pattern. Now, the only thing that I'm not doing on the Haas on that piece is is the splining. And you're using Mastercam to program all of that. No, I master. I use Mastercam every day. Um, you know, kind of my. You know, it's, it's kind of a tagline to me, but it's the truth. Is master is the tool I reach for most often, every day, in my toolbox. I use it in, in every facet of what we do, whether it's it's designing these parts, redesigning them, you know, because I do a lot of redesign. We change what we've got. We find what breaks. We want to improve on it. Uh, all my tool paths that I generate for the water jet, the DXF files, we will create those in master cam. Then, send it over to the software package that. So I use Mastercam daily. And I see there's a monster truck shock absorber in the other room, so if you guys haven't seen it, go over and take a look at it. But how many machine parts are in there that you've made with Mastercam in a shock absorber? Um, one of those, the, the stage three shock like I have next door, which is a 26 inch travel shock absorber. It's a nitrogen shock. It's about 40 machine components to put together one shock absorber. And there's eight on a truck. And every single part on that, is is designed in tool paths in master cam. Excellent. And how many other parts on the truck do you think you make, you know, with master cam and sell to your competitors? Uh, well over a hundred. Um, you know, I have probably more than a hundred different components. The shocks, you know, that's say forty pieces right there, but I consider that to be one item. And uh, you know, we have all the weld-in frame bushings. Uh, Ring and pinion supports. Just a, it's a multitude of parts. Crank drive components. A lot of my a lot of my stuff is standalone. It's one offs, uh, a one off piece to, as part of an assembly. And then there's there's large assemblies that are, you know, a bunch of parts put together. And you guys have a big race of the year. What's that biggest race, and how does that work out for you? How do you get in it? Well, kind of the mecca for monster trucks is the is the Las Vegas Nevada. That's where we do our world finals every year, and. Um, Actually, uh, I won in 2007. I was a world freestyle champion, and this year I actually finished second place. But that's quite a show. I mean, it's uh, this past year 24 trucks over a three day period competing for um, two nights. And next year it's a three day show, 32 trucks. So we have, we have customers, or not customers, but our fans come from all over the United States and I think from seven foreign countries to, to come watch the event. So it's, it's a lot of fun. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you.